Hello everyone, welcome back. We are uh, discussing meta model based reliability analysis and today our topic is orthogonal polynomials. In the last lecture we uh, discussed a least square approximation and why we need to develop a meta model for our reliability analysis. In this lecture today we are going to discuss a different types of polynomials that we can use and what are the advantages of using these polynomials. So, they are orthogonal polynomials. Now, before we go into the details of orthogonal polynomials, let us first uh, quickly revisit the least square approximations. Particularly, uh, if you recall, uh, at the last uh, of our previous lecture, we discussed least square approximation of continuous function. And the result was quite satisfactory. But the main disadvantage is uh, the solving of large number of uh, equations that we develop using this approach. Now, when the dimension increases, obviously, uh, if you solve simultaneous equation, uh, you may face a uh, lot of uh, numerical issues. One of them is yield conditioning. Now, the moment we hit yield conditioning, then obviously, that affects the overall uh, meta model and its uh, ultimate estimation of whether it is reliability or any other. Sometimes, we use these meta models for optimization. So, this numerical issue is bound to affect the uh, overall results, overall performance. Then uh, obviously, uh, that motivates us to uh, look for an alternate approach and that is why we uh, are going to study orthogonal polynomials. Now, the moment we will develop these orthogonal polynomials, we will see even the uh, mathematical derivations will show us what is the uh, clear advantage over conventional least square where we use any polynomial function to fit a meta model, right. So, let us first consider a polynomial of the form that you can see on your screen. Now, last time we also used similar type of polynomial, uh, there f 0 x was 1, then f 1 x was x and then f n x was x to the power n. So, we write the same functional form in a different way. So, this time we have a naught that is the first coefficient times f not x, then we have a 1 times f 1 x and so on and so forth. So, ultimately it is a summation where within the summation we have a i that is the coefficient and then we have a function f i of x. Now, this f i of x we can define any polynomial of our choice, but the moment we do that and then we can define SSE and for a continuous function obviously this expression is known to us. So, we have y of x that is the observation minus the model that we fit that is the amount of error we have between the observation and the proposed model. Then we square it up and then multiply that with the weight function and because we have a continuous expression then we integrate over the complete domain and that is how we get the SSE. Now, Using this expression, let us see how we can cast these functional forms f i of x and then we can develop this orthogonal polynomial. So, now uh, if we minimize capital S, then we need to differentiate that with respect to a i and equate it to 0. Now, if we do that, on the right hand side, we get this expression and where just by changing i, we can develop a set of equations. Now, obviously, the moment we do that, we ultimately get this expression which is slightly modified from what we had in the earlier case. Earlier, this functional form f not x, f 1 x, we had a particular expression, but uh, now we have uh, it is in a more generic form. So, this is the set of equations that we develop and we have altogether n, my n plus 1 unknowns as we can see that this a 0, a 1 up to n, these are the unknowns we need to solve. And the moment uh, we define this weight function, obviously, we propose this following relation for orthogonal polynomials. The, the orthogonal polynomials f i, you can see, uh, in this case, we have orthogonality satisfied. So, when we integrate a to b w x that is the weight function times f p of x times f q of x dx, then we have uh, it is 0 for p not equal to q and we have a 
finite uh, form when p equal to q. Now, when this condition is satisfied, uh, we call this functions are orthogonal polynomials. Remember one thing, even at this stage, just notice that this orthogonality is defined in terms of this weight function that we propose. So, the moment we introduce this orthogonality, what happens? If you look at this expression, the moment we have p equal to q or in this case, as we keep on changing this i, so when this, for the first term, when this i equal to 0, then we will have a finite integral here and then all of the terms in that equation will be 0 because of the orthogonality. Similarly, when we go to the next equation, obviously, when this i equal to 1, then we will have uh, this expression. Otherwise, all other expression is 0. So, this system of equation reduces to this nice form and it is very compact and on the left hand side, you can see we have only a i that we can directly solve just by performing this integral and taking the inverse of that and taking on the right hand side, we can evaluate this a i. So, effectively, a set of linear equations that we earlier developed using uh, limits uh, least square approach now becomes uh, a, a decoupled system of equation where we independently can solve all the coefficients. So, that is the advantage of using orthogonal polynomials. As I said earlier that this mathematical form itself tells us what is the advantage of using orthogonal polynomials when we fit a curve to a data. Now, this uh, expression, let us revisit. So, we have uh, this functional form uh, of the entire expression the moment we use orthogonality. And then effectively a i, we can solve using this expression. So, as we keep on changing i, for every i, we can solve this a i. So, it is pretty straightforward. And uh, once we solve a i, then that we can substitute in the original model of y x and that creates our meta model. But for this, first we need to evaluate this orthogonal polynomials. We have to see what are the, what are they, how we can derive these orthogonal polynomials with respect to certain weight function. So, once the orthogonal polynomials are defined, then the problem is pretty, pretty straightforward. So, we can evaluate this expression on the right hand side, uh, the expression in the numerator and denominator and then uh, we can find out the coefficients and immediately we can um, fit the curve. Now, there are different orthogonal polynomials exist depending upon the interval, the domain this uh, over which we integrate this function. So, based on this domain A and B, and the weight function, we have different orthogonal polynomials. For example, Jacobi, Chebyshev, Legendre, Logger, Hermite. So, as we progress, we will see, we will derive uh, some of these uh, polynomials and we will see how their mathematical forms uh, are developed and uh, we have already discussed the advantage of using orthogonal polynomials and as we progress in this course, we will see uh, how they help us to develop the meta model more efficiently. So, the first task when we uh, develop uh, a meta model based on orthogonal polynomials is the evaluation of the orthogonal polynomial itself. So, the function f i x uh, can be evaluated using Gram's mead orthogonalization process. So, I will uh, describe that uh, in uh, this slide. So, the orthogonalization process actually starts with the proposal f i x which is valid over an interval a to b and it must have a leading term which in this case x to the power i and then the functional form starts with uh, this uh, if not x equal to 1 and the moment we have it, our task is to find out the next term that is f 1 x in this orthogonal set. So, f 1 x will have leading term uh, as we have already said that x to the power i. So, in this case it is x and then we can express f 1 x in this form. So, we have this leading term 
x to the power i because i equal to 1. So, we have x here plus k 1 comma 0. That means, this condition, this, this coefficient will find out using the orthogonality between f 1 and f 0. So, that is how it is defined. Now, once we define this polynomial, our task is to determine this k 1 comma 0, this constant. And because f 1 is orthogonal to f 0 with respect to the weight function, so we have in this case, this is the expression. So, that defines the orthogonality between f 0 and f 1. Now, we can actually solve this expression and then find out what will be my k 1 comma 0 as you can see in this uh, case it is uh, this compact form. Now, the moment we try to evaluate this function, we should first define this uh, weight function and uh, the moment we define the weight function, we can evaluate this k 1 comma 0 and the moment we do that, we can cast this function f 1 x in terms of um, these coefficients. So, that is how the orthogonality works. So, now if we continue, so f 2 x will have a leading term x square and the moment we have that, we can express f 2 x in terms of f not x and f 1 x. So, the expression goes like this, f 2 x is equal to x square that is the leading term plus k 2 comma 0. So, we are in the second uh, degree polynomial. So, f 2, so k 2 comma 0, it actually relates this function with f 0. That is how the notation goes. So, 2 comma 0 times f 0 x plus k 2 comma 1 f 1 x. Now, the moment we define this function, then we can invoke orthogonality and then in this case, this f 2 x will be orthogonal to f not x and f 1 x separately and we will develop that expression and the moment we do that, we can evaluate this function, this, this constants k 2 comma 0 and k 2 comma 1. So, let us see how it goes. So, uh, we again define the orthogonality of this f 2 with respect to f not x. So, this is the expression. Then uh, we use the conditions and the moment we use that, we can easily evaluate k 2 comma 0 which is having this form. Now, because f not x is 1, so we can further simplify it. Similarly, <coughs> if 1 x is also orthogonal to f 2 x and therefore, we can uh, invoke that relation and ultimately we can evaluate k 2 comma 1 in this compact form. Now, we already know what is f 1 x. So, we can put that expression and then we can find out the two constant f in f 2 x. These constants are k 2 comma 0 and k 2 comma 1. So, that is how this uh, algorithm goes. Now, we can, we can proceed in a similar way and then we can develop as many terms we need in this uh, uh, expression. So, f i x will have a leading term which is x to the power i plus k i comma 0. So, we will start from the first uh, function f not 0. So, k i comma 0 will define the orthogonality between f i x and f 0 x and similarly, we sum all other terms up to i minus 1. And then uh, we can we can define the orthogonality between f i x and all other previous terms. So, in this case it is f 0 x, f 1 x and up to f i minus 1 x. Now, the moment we do that and simplify, we get this k i comma 1 into this compact form. Now, look at this expression. We know all previous uh, functions. So, we can put those expressions here and the moment we define weight function with respect to that weight, we can evaluate this constant k i comma 1. Now, this way, we can find out all f i x and then the moment we do that, we can use that relation to find out all the constant that we have in our meta model, which is in this case y of x. 
So, that actually tells us how we can use orthogonal polynomials and the expression itself uh, shows us the advantage of using orthogonal polynomials. But the point that we have to keep in mind is that the orthogonality is defined in terms of the weight function Wx and all orthogonal polynomials they have a domain in this case it is A to B and we start with a seed if you recall if not x was 1 when we started deriving this. So, we start with that seed and then we gradually develop all other polynomials from the known information that is weight, interval and seed. We use the orthogonality and naturally we develop the expressions for all higher order terms. So, let us uh, go through an example. So, we will derive first four orthogonal polynomials f and x within an interval minus 1 to plus 1 and our weight function is wx equal to 1. So, in this case, let us assume that f not x is 1 and then obviously f 1 x will be as per our definition x plus k 1 comma 0 f not x. So, we can evaluate this k 1 comma 0 and in this case it is again uh, from this expression you can evaluate over a range of minus 1 to plus 1 and ultimately it turns out to be 0. So, obviously this condition leads to f 1 x equal to x. Then we repeat the same exercise for f 2 x it is having a leading term x square plus k 2 comma 0 f not x plus k 2 comma 1 f 1 x. Out of that we already know you see f 1 x and f not x already defined that is the starting point. So, our task is now to evaluate k 2 comma 0 which again if you repeat the same exercise we can get this as a constant which is minus one third. Similarly, we can find out k 2 comma 1 which is again 0 in this case. So, ultimately what we get f 2 x is x square minus one third. And then uh, we can repeat that same exercise and find out k 3 comma 0 which again is 0. 3 comma 1 is minus 3 by 5 and 3 comma 2 is again 0. So, ultimately we have f 3 x which is x cube minus 3 by 5 x. So, these polynomials that we get this is called Legendre polynomial and if we plot this the polynomials look like this. So, the derivation of Legendre polynomial as you can see it is very straightforward. So, we define first weight in this case we have a constant weight. Then we define the interval which is minus 1 to plus 1 and then we start with f not x as 1 and then follow the orthogonality relations and uh, gradually construct all other polynomials and then finally we have this expression and we can continue this exercise for as many terms we need in the ultimate uh, meta model that we have. So, that is how the Legendre polynomials are derived. So, I leave a home task here you can verify these functional forms whether they are orthogonal or not just check once more once we have this expression that you can do with respect to the weight function. So, that exercise I just leave it with you. Uh, they are bound to I mean prove the orthogonality because that is how we have constructed but still with this uh, functional form you can uh, verify that orthogonality at your end. So, leave that as an exercise. Now, let us consider a sequence p n of x which is having uh, infinite terms. So, p n x that is the polynomial it has a degree of n then it is orthogonal with respect to the weight function in an interval a to b. Obviously, the moment we define this uh, a must be less than b. So, as per our definition because this is an orthogonal polynomial p n x. So, we have this orthogonality relationship satisfied. So, with respect to w x if we uh, multiply 
say PMX and PNX and integrate over the complete domain, we basically get this uh, orthogonality. That means this expression will be 0 if mm, m not equal to n and will be 1 uh, with you know, when m equal to n. Obviously, there will be a constant term hn. So, this wx again, this is a weight function which is continuous and, and uh, then ultimately mm, in symbolic form, this is the orthogonality relation between the two functions f and g. Now, let us consider a different example. In this case, what we do, we keep the weight function as 1, but we change the interval. Earlier case, it was minus 1 to plus 1 and let me see if we change the interval, say 0 to 1 and then we invoke grams mead orthogonality c what are the polynomials we can construct using p naught x again the starting point is all the same it is 1 so p naught x equal to 1 so the moment we have that so p 1 x will come in this form and then ultimately if we solve this by now you you can uh, carry out this integral so ultimately what we will get is x minus half Similarly, if we continue P2 of x, that also we can derive using the all known information. So, we have this expression, leading term is x square, then obviously this is the constant part times P naught x, then again we have another constant part times P1 x. So, if we derive that expression, ultimately if we put all this necessary information and ultimately we get it is x square minus x plus half, sorry, one sixth. And then we can also cross verify this uh, orthogonality among the components. So, that is uh, obvious. So, we have p naught x is 1, then p 1 x is x minus half and then p 3, p 2 x is x square minus x plus one sixth. Similarly, if we repeat the exercise, we can also find out all other higher uh, terms. So, in this case, P3x will have an expression like this and you just note that the leading term in this case is x cube and we have all other terms that is derived using the orthogonality relation. Similarly, P4 and P5 also you can see. So, as we go higher and higher, obviously, we have uh, all other uh, lower terms and using that only the orthogonalities are defined. So, uh, we have these expressions, but the advantage of this expression is uh, that in the meta model, if you use the moment we invoke orthogonality, we can straight away solve the uh, simultaneous equations to find out the constants a i. So, in this case, our domain was 0 to 1 and w x, uh, the weight function is a constant that is uh, 1. The moment we have that information, we have this complete set of uh, polynomial and the advantage of using this, uh, we can develop all other higher terms using the information that we already have derived. So, if we try to repeat this exercise for P6, that we can easily construct the leading term will be x to the power 6 plus all other terms and then we invoke orthogonality one by one and then we can solve for it. Now, let us go for a different orthogonal polynomial that we will use for our reliability application and this polynomial is what we call harmite polynomial. Now, the range of this polynomial is minus infinity to plus infinity and it is orthogonal with respect to a weight function which is e to the power minus x square. So, the moment we do that, uh, we will derive this expression for that, uh, we use Rodriguez formula. So, this expression, mathematical expression is uh, like this. So, here we have this capital D is the differential operator and uh, the moment we do that, we can write down this uh, D n plus 1 operated over this weight function, then we can simplify it and then we can use this relation and then further 
modify this expression and then ultimately what we get is this final expression. Now from this uh, relation what we can prove is that it leads to a recurrence relation for the Hermite polynomial which is hn plus 1x is equal to 2x hnx minus hn prime x for all n starting from 0 then 1, 2 up to infinite terms. So again in this case we have this recurrence relation that we can use to generate the orthogonal polynomials which in this case is Hermite polynomial. So our h naught x again we start it as 1 and then uh, h n x is a polynomial of degree n. So h 2 n x obviously this is an even function and 2 n plus 1 is an odd function and the leading coefficient of h n x is k n which is 2 to the power n. Now for that again Hermite polynomial satisfies these orthogonality conditions that we will uh, prove in a minute. But the most important relation that we should note is this uh, recurrence relation. Now let us see uh, how we can uh, prove this orthogonality. So we have uh, this expression already claimed that is the orthogonality relation as we keep on changing m and n. Then we start with this uh, expression where in this case we can put the expression of h and x that we earlier had this expression of h and x and then uh, we can simplify and, and then ultimately get this expression. So now uh, if we have a situation where m equal to n and c what happens. So we have this uh, where m equal to n and then further if you simplify this expression we get this and then ultimately we if we carry out this task ultimately we get this relation and which is uh, 2 to the power n times n factorial square root of pi. Now this actually proves uh, the orthogonality because when m equal to n then we have this uh, expression otherwise it will become 0 that you can check yourself. So that proves the orthogonality. So we have this uh, three term recurrence relation. Let us see how it uh, we, we get this. So we have this weight function which is e to the power minus x square and then obviously if we differentiate that we get this expression which is minus 2x times wx and then we apply Leibniz rule and then the moment we do that we have this expression comes from the Leibniz rule and there if we put the expression for this uh, wx in this format and then we ultimately get this expression. So the moment we do that uh, we can now develop this recurrence relation which is h n plus 1 x is equal to 2 x times h n x minus 2 n h n minus 1 x and then uh, obviously h n prime x is this quantity and then if we combine these two we get the uh, recurrence relation. So the orthogonality of the Hermite polynomial is defined and also the recurrence relation. So now with that um, we will move further we will see how we can um, develop the orthogonal polynomials uh, uh, using using this uh, orthogonality relation and using grams mead proposal and then uh, we will use those orthogonal polynomials to construct the meta model and as we progress we will see how we can use them. So, so this is the orthogonal relation recurrence relation we have for this Hermite polynomial and then uh, This expression finally, uh, the last expression actually implies that h n x satisfies the second order linear differential equation. So that is uh, this, uh, this equation. So now from this equation, uh, the generating function is uh, for this uh, Hermite polynomial is this. Now, so to prove that let us start with, so this f of t is say this expression, we start with x minus t whole square. So now if we expand that we get this form and then ultimately using Taylor series we can get this summation. Now if we substitute x minus t with u then what we will get we can simplify this expression ultimately we get this relation and then we can simplify it further. 
so which ultimately gives us e to the power minus x square h n x. Now, obviously, the moment we derive this, we can get the following relation. So, we have, we started with this expression. So, we have e to the power minus x square times e to the power 2 x t minus t square, which ultimately gives this form. So, f of t is ultimately is uh, this expression, which is the generating function. Now, uh, with that, uh, let us close here. As we progress in this course, we will see how we can use this Hermite polynomial to construct our meta models for solving the reliability problem. So, in the next class, we will first discuss response surface method, where we will adopt least square technique first and then we will solve. We will see what are the issues there when we uh, use least square based response surface and then uh, in the next week, we will start with orthogonal polynomials and we will see how we can develop meta models based on orthogonal polynomials. With that, let us close our discussion on orthogonal polynomials. Thank you very much.